hello, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to How the World is Going to End Iceberg, and this is part 3, which does mean that it is the end of the series. After I've done this, um, this means that all the icebergs are finished now, I have no ongoing ones, and this is my, my plans for the next few videos, I'll show it on screen now, I've also posted it on like the, the YouTube community thing, but just in case you missed it, this is what I plan to do. So then, let's get into the last part of the iceberg. Okay, so kicking things off, um, not a very good start to be honest, but we have quantum vacuum chain reaction, false vacuum decay, and also quantum vacuum collapse. And when I typed all of these up, it all came up with like the same article, and I couldn't find anything that was like telling me what was um, sort of different about them. So I'm just going to say basically what it said in the article, and if anyone can explain the differences down in the comments, that would be much appreciated. So, in quantum field theory, a false vacuum is a hypothetical vacuum that is stable, but not the most stable state possible. It may last for a very long time in that state, but could eventually decay to the more stable state, an event known as the false vacuum decay. The most common suggestion of how a decay might happen in our universe is called a bubble nucleation. And that is if a small region of the universe by chance reached a more stable vacuum, this bubble would spread. A false vacuum exists at a local minimum of energy and is therefore not stable in contrast to a true vacuum which exists at a global minimum and is stale. Next we have Vern, Vernshot, Vernishot, and a Vernshot, which was named after a French author, is a hypothetical volcanic eruption event caused by the buildup of gas deep underneath a craton. Such an event may be forceful enough to launch an extreme amount of material from the crust and mantle into suborbital trajectory, and then this would lead to significant further damage after the material crashes back down to the surface. Next we have a Colbert bomb, and a Colbert bomb is a type of salted bomb, which is a nuclear weapon designed to produce enhanced amounts of radioactive fallout. The concept of the Colbert bomb was originally described in a radio program by physicist Leo Sizard on February 26th, 1950. His intent was not to propose that such a weapon should be built, but to show that nuclear weapon technology would soon reach this point where it could seriously end life on Earth. It is also known as a doomsday device. Next we have eternal hibernation. And this is just, you know, like, your hamster, guinea pig. Um, ever just sleep. So, if everything just went to sleep, this is just me thinking off the, the top of my head. This is what I think would happen. Is there anything about bees? As I've said in a lot of previous videos, science is not my, my strong point, but I swear that I read something where if, like, bees went extinct, like, the world would end. Like a, sort of, like a butterfly effect, something like that. Yeah, so, it would just be like that, but... I think I'm starting to second doubt myself. I'm gonna move on before I say something stupid. Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD, is a doctrine of military strategy and national security policy in which a full-scale use of a nuclear weapon by two or more opposing sides would cause the complete annihilation of both the attacker and the defender. To, so, to put it simply, I'm pretty sure this just means if two nukes uh, hit um, both sides at the same time, killing both of them and also the world. It's like when you trade uh, on like Siege or COD but on a, a, a much larger scale, obviously. And that is the end of tier 7, and now we are moving on to tier 8. First, we have the Zora Sphatic Prophecies, and the Zorafasan Prophecies foretell the coming of the world's saviour, the prophecy from the Jamasp Nama. It is said that the sun will stand in the middest of the sky on the time of Oshir Bami for 10 days, and in its time of Oshir Ma for 20 days, and in the time of Soyosh for 30 days, is interrupted referring to Muhammad, the Bab, and Bahu'ullah. Um, with these sort of like, uh, how would you say it? Um, like different religions and cults and things like that. I read um, what I find on it, but I still have no idea what it means. This is like some religious thing, so you have to be sort of uh, familiar with the religion to, to understand. Which I am not, but um, I did try. Um, I did a lot of uh, on Wikipedia and all that. I was reading about like the, um, 
all the the names which I just read and I still don't really understand it. So um, I'm just going to move on. Next we have total existence failure. And total existence failure is when something malfunctions by virtue of not existing at all. Which is quite a, a cool and also quite a scary concept to think about. And in the context of this iceberg, I think it means if sort of all the machinery and everything. And in this context, I think it means sort of like the machinery or even the humans if all had a total existence failure. And now moving on to tier 9. Yes, these last tiers are, um, are quite short. I think that, yeah, there's only one in tier 9. And I'm going to try and explain it to the best of my ability. And this is the 9 billion names of God. And basically, people believe that the universe was created for this purpose. And that once this naming is complete, God will bring the universe to an end. Three centuries ago, the monks created an alphabet in which they calculated they could encode all the possible names of God, which was around 9 billion. Writing the names out by hand, as they have been doing, even after eliminating various nonsense combinations, would take another 15,000 years. The monk wished to use modern technology to finish this task more quickly. This is what I got from uh, a book which I found, and I'm pretty sure that the book is based off of uh, what the person who made this iceberg was referring to, because I couldn't find anything else, like, apart from the book, uh, for this website, so... Not website, for this, um, sort of entry. So I'm just assuming it means this. But yeah, um, shorter video today. Uh, mainly because of just... There wasn't really much on these last few tiers. And I kind of wish that I, um... Did it in maybe two parts now. Because now you just have, uh, like, just barely over ten minutes. But, um, either way, still finished the iceberg. But anyway, that is gonna have to be the end of this video today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, even though it's only on the short side. But anyway, I hope you guys are looking forward to what I have planned. Because I've been trying to sort of not get away from icebergs, because I like doing them. But sort of just step back for them. Because I took, like, um, obviously, uh, a, like a one-week break uh, a few weeks back. And because I was still doing the icebergs when I came back, it still felt exactly the same. So I feel like now that I am like moving on to other stuff, which I really enjoy talking about, which is like uh, media in general. I like talking about uh, movies, TV shows, and sort of trying to understand them for a deeper meaning. I like all things like that. So I'm very excited to to bring you a few more videos. And I also have one other iceberg because they are uh, they're quite fun to do. And this one is one which was sent to me. But uh, I'm going to leave a, a surprise for what it is, so uh, you'll have that soon. But yeah, if you liked the video, give it a like, and why not subscribe to me, because please. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. Stay spooky.